Mikhail Naimi was a celebrated Lebanese author, poet and philosopher who left an indelible mark on the literary landscape of the modern era. Naimi was known for his literary works, which encompassed various genres such as poetry, novels and essays. His writings often explored philosophical and spiritual themes, reflecting his deep contemplation on life, existence and human nature. Naimi's most famous work, The Book of Murdad, published in 1948, is considered a masterpiece of spiritual literature. This allegorical novel delves deep into the realms of mysticism and philosophy, challenging readers to question their perceptions of reality and explore the depths of their own consciousness. The Book of Murdad is a spiritual work of art explores the themes of love, unity and the search for inner truth. Set in a remote monastery, the story follows a group of people who embark on a journey of self-discovery guided by the enigmatic Murda. At the beginning of the story, Mikhail is burdened by the weight of the world. He is lost and searching for answers, feeling disconnected from his true purpose. This period represents a significant low point in his life, filled with confusion and despair. However, Mikhail's life takes a dramatic turn when he arrives at the secluded monastery and meets the wise monk, Murdet. This encounter marks an upswing in his journey as Murdad welcomes him with open arms, offering guidance and support. Through their conversations, Murdad imparts timeless wisdoms that challenge the conventional beliefs and norms of society. The reader is introduced to a wide range of characters throughout the narrative, all of whom, like Mikhail, are seeking self-realization. Each character represents a different aspect of human nature, grappling with their own inner demons and searching for a way to transcend their limitations. Through poetic prose and profound philosophical insights, Naimi invites readers to question their own beliefs and encourages them to embrace a more compassionate and enlightened way of living. The well-known Indian mystic, Osho, also known as Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, was a spiritual teacher and philosopher who had spoken about the book in his talks and regarded it as one of the greatest masterpieces of art, beauty and meditation. Osho praised the book for its profound insights and its ability to convey spiritual teaching. He said, quote, There are millions of books in the world, but the Book of Murdad stands out far above any other book in existence. It is unfortunate that very few people are acquainted with the Book of Murdad, for the simple reason that it is not a religious scripture. It is a parable, a fiction, but containing oceanic truth. It is a small book, but the man who gave birth to this book. In mind my words, I am not saying the man who wrote this book. Nobody wrote this book. I am saying the man who gave birth to this book. He was an unknown, a nobody. And because he was not a novelist, he never wrote again. Just that single book contains his whole experience. The name of the man was Mikhail Naimi. It is an extraordinary book in the sense that you can read it and miss it completely. Because the meaning of the book is not in the words of the book. The meaning of the book is running side by side in silence between the words, between the lines, in the gaps, Unquote. Osho exceptionally recommended readers the Book of Murdad as an invitation to transcend limited perceptions of reality and discover the profound interplay between the individual and the universe. Born on November 17, 1889, in Mount Sinai, Lebanon, Mikhail Naimi's work resonated with readers around the world, exploring profound themes of love, spirituality, and the human condition. Contemporary of Halil Gibran, from an early age, Mikhail Naimi exhibited a deep love for literature and a profound curiosity about the mysteries of life. Naimi was born into a Greek Orthodox family and completed his elementary education at the Baskinta School. He then studied at the Russian Teachers Institute in Nazareth and the Theological Seminary in Poltava. He moved to Washington, the United States in 1911, and he enrolled at the University of Washington in Seattle, where he immersed himself, earning degrees in law and liberal arts. Naimi's philosophy integrates both Eastern and Western thought drawing from diverse philosophical traditions. By blending elements of Sufism, Hinduism and Western existentialism, he offers readers a holistic approach to self-discovery and self-knowledge. The Book of Murdad guides Mikhail through a roller coaster of emotions, challenging him to confront his fears, doubts and limitations. Yet, through each up and down, Mikhail grows in wisdom and understanding. He learns to navigate the complexities of life with grace and compassion, ultimately finding his true purpose and a deep sense of inner peace. Ask not of things to shed their veils. Unveil yourselves, and things will be unveiled. 
Mikhail Naimi. Naimi encourages individuals to look within themselves for understanding and enlightenment rather than seeking external answers or expecting things to reveal themselves without personal introspection. Instead of relying solely on external sources or expecting the world to provide all the answers, Naimi suggests that true understanding comes from within. By unveiling ourselves, by exploring our own thoughts, emotions and experiences, we can gain deeper insights into the world around us. He encourages us to look beyond the surface level and engage in introspection to uncover hidden truths and gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world. By doing so, we can unlock new perspectives and insights that may have been previously hidden. In the biblical story of Cain, he becomes envious and resentful of his brother Abel, leading him to commit the first murder. Instead of asking why Cain acted in such a way, we should look within ourselves and unveil our own tendencies towards jealousy and anger. By understanding our own inner feelings and motivations, we can gain insight into the actions of others. In another part of the Bible, in the story of Ishmael, he is the son of Abraham and Hagar, who is cast out into the desert. Rather than asking why Ishmael was abandoned, similarly, Naomi encourages us to unveil our own feelings of rejection and abandonment. By exploring our own experiences and emotions, we can empathize with Ishmael's situation and gain a deeper understanding of his story. Again in the biblical narrative, Esau is the older twin brother of Jacob and is tricked out of his birthright by his brother. Instead of focusing solely on Esau's loss, Naomi invites us to unveil our own tendencies towards greed and deceit. By examining our own desires and actions, we can gain insight into Esau's predicament and the consequences of his choices. The really poor is, he who misuses what he has. The really rich is, he who well uses what he has. Mikhail Naimi True richness lies in being a good custodian of what we possess, whether it be material possessions, talents or opportunities. By utilizing our resources in a thoughtful and responsible manner, we can create value and make a positive impact. True wealth and poverty are not solely determined by the quantity of possessions or resources one owns but rather, by how effectively and responsibly one utilizes them. It emphasizes the importance of using what we have wisely and purposefully. For example, someone who has limited material wealth, but uses their resources efficiently and for the benefit of themselves and others can be considered rich. On the other hand, someone who has abundant resources, but misuses or squanders them may be considered poor. This inspires us to be mindful of how we use our resources, and to make choices that align with our values and goals. Someone who has artistic talents but never explores or develops them may be considered poor in terms of their creative potential. Conversely, someone who takes full advantage of their talents and uses them to create meaningful work or make a positive impact can be seen as rich. True richness comes from self-improvement, self-awareness and the pursuit of meaningful goals. By using what one has in a purposeful and well-directed manner, we can experience a sense of fulfillment and richness in our lives. Every stumbling block is a warning. Read the warning well, and the stumbling block shall become a beacon. Mikhail Naimi Obstacles or challenges in life can serve as valuable lessons and warnings. Instead of being discouraged or defeated by these stumbling blocks, Naimi reminds us to pay attention to the lessons they offer. By reading the warning well and understanding the message behind the obstacle, we can transform it into a guiding light or beacon that leads us towards a better path. Imagine a person who aspires to start their own business. Along the way, they encounter various stumbling blocks, such as financial difficulties, unexpected setbacks and fierce competition. Instead of becoming disheartened, the person heeds the advice of Naomi and views these obstacles as warnings. They take the time to analyze each stumbling block seeking to understand the underlying cause and lessons to be learned. Through this process, they gain valuable insights into managing finances, adapting to changing circumstances and differentiating their business from competitors. By reading the warning well, they are able to transform each stumbling block into a beacon of guidance, leading them towards making better decisions and ultimately achieving success in their entrepreneurial journey. To the unspoiled, even a snake bite is a loving kiss. But to the spoiled, even a loving kiss is a snake bite. Mikhail Naimi Our perception of events and experiences is influenced by our inner disposition and level of transparency. 
to someone who is unspoiled, pure or untainted. Even a negative or challenging experience can be seen in a positive light. They have the ability to find love and beauty even in difficult situations. On the other hand, to someone who is spoiled, cynical or closed off, even a positive or loving experience can be perceived as negative or harmful. Their negative mindset colors their interpretation of events, preventing them from experiencing love and joy. Imagine a talented artist who has received honors and recognition for their work throughout their career. However, as they become more successful, they develop a sense of entitlement and arrogance. When someone offers constructive feedback or gentle criticism on their latest piece, they interpret it as a personal attack or a snakebite. Their spoiled mindset prevents them from appreciating the value of feedback and growth, hindering their artistic development. Creep where you cannot walk. Walk where you cannot run. Run where you cannot fly. Fly where you cannot bring the whole universe to a standstill within you. Mikhail Naimi The Book of Murdered presents a series of progressive actions that encourage people to push their limits and strive for transformation. A path of continuous growth and expansion, urging individuals to go beyond their comfort zones and confines. It emphasizes the importance of challenging oneself and embracing new experiences in order to reach higher levels of understanding and self-realization. Mamie encourages individuals to take small and cautious steps in situations where they feel uncertain or hesitant. It suggests that even when faced with restrictions or unfamiliar territory, it is important to persevere and move forward, even if it means progressing slowly and steadily. To maintain a steady pace and make progress in situations where they may feel overwhelmed or unable to move quickly, that it is important to keep moving forward, even if progress seems slow, rather than giving up or rushing ahead without proper preparation, to push their limits and move swiftly in situations where they may feel restricted or confined, that it is important to embrace a sense of urgency and take bold actions, even if they cannot achieve complete freedom or transcendence, to soar to new heights and strive for transcendence. For instance, if someone has a fear of public speaking, they can start by speaking in front of a small group of friends or family members. By gradually exposing themselves to the fear, they can build confidence and eventually be able to walk confidently in front of larger audience size. Overall, Mamie inspires individuals to continuously challenge themselves, expand their horizons, and strive for personal growth and self-realization. It encourages a mindset of continuous improvement and the pursuit of higher levels of understanding and consciousness. Too vast is man and too imponderable his nature. Too varied are his talents, and too inexhaustible his strength. Beware of those who attempt to set him boundaries. Leave as if your God himself had need of you his life to live. And so in truth, he does. This highlights the immense capacity and potential of human beings that human nature is vast, complex and immeasurable. Each person possesses unique talents and strengths that are boundless and inexhaustible. It cautions against those who try to confine or limit people, emphasizing the importance of embracing and nurturing one's true potential. Mamie focuses the idea that every individual is an embodiment of the divine. He encourages individuals to live their lives as if God himself depends on them to fulfill his purpose. This implies that each person has a significant role to play in the grand scheme of existence and that their actions and choices have a profound impact on the world. Consider a situation where someone is faced with hurdles and barriers that seem insurmountable. Mamie reminds them that their strength is inexhaustible and encourages them to persevere and overcome those obstacles, that they have the power within themselves to rise above limitations and achieve greatness. Mikhail Mamie's The Book of Murdad celebrates the vast potential and divine essence within every individual. It encourages individuals to embrace their unique talents, strengths and limitless nature, while cautioning against those who try to set limitations. It reminds us that living in alignment with our true selves and recognizing our interconnectedness with the divine can lead to a fulfilling and purposeful life. No love is love that subjugates the lover. No love is love that feeds on flesh and blood. No love is love that draws a woman to a man only to breed more women and men and thus perpetuate their bondage to the flesh. Mikhail Naimi It presents a critical perspective on love, highlighting the importance of genuine love that does not oppress, objectify or perpetuate societal constraints. True love should not oppress or dominate the person who experiences it. 
Genuine love allows individuals to be free, autonomous and true to themselves. For example, a healthy romantic relationship should be based on mutual respect, equality and the freedom to express one's thoughts, feelings and desires without fear of subjugation or control. Authentic love should not be based solely on physical desires or superficial aspects of a person. True love goes beyond the physical and embraces the deeper essence of an individual. For instance, a relationship built solely on physical attraction or materialistic desires may lack the depth and emotional connection necessary for genuine love to flourish. It suggests that love should not be solely focused on the reproduction of offspring, but should encompass a broader understanding of emotional connection. And true love allows individuals to transcend societal expectations and explore their own paths of self-realization and fulfillment. By highlighting these aspects, Amy encourages readers to reflect on their own understanding of love and strive for relationships and connections that are based on genuine care, respect and emotional depth. A muddy brook can easily muddy another brook. But, can a muddy brook muddy the sea? The sea shall gladly take the mud and spread it in its bed, and give the brook clear water in return. Mikhail Naimi This invites us to reflect on the power of influence, and the transformative nature of a greater entity or agency. When one entity is contaminated or influenced by negativity, it can easily pass on that contamination to others. It highlights how negative influences can spread and affect those around us. For example, if a person harbors negative thoughts, emotions or behaviors, they can easily influence and impact the mindset and actions of others. However, it challenges the notion that negativity or impurity can have a lasting impact on something greater. In this case, the sea symbolizes a vast and powerful entity that represents purity, wisdom or a higher state of being. The sea, being vast and powerful, has the ability to absorb and transform the impurities brought by the muddy brook. It willingly accepts the mud and incorporates it into its vastness, spreading it in its bed. In return, the sea provides the brook with clear water, symbolizing purification and renewal. This implies that the greater entity has the capacity to transform and purify the smaller entity, or agency. It reminds us that we have the choice to either perpetuate negativity, or rise above it and seek transformation. We can detach ourselves from the fluctuations of external conditions, and the judgments of the mind. By cultivating equanimity and transmuting to our purpose, we remain undisturbed and we can maintain a sense of inner peace and stability, regardless of the ups and downs of life. Our true selves have the ability to transform and transmute hurdles of life by connecting with our inner essence which is inherently imperturbable. As a living branch of a living vine, when buried in the ground, strikes root and ultimately becomes an independent grape-bearing vine like its mother with which it remains connected. So shall man, the living branch of the vine divine, when buried in the soil of its divinity, become a god, remaining permanently one with God. Mikhail Naimi It can be interpreted as an analogy for the potential of human spiritual transformation and unity with the divine. The metaphor of a living branch of a vine being buried in the ground and growing into an independent grape-bearing vine while remaining connected to its mother vine represents the journey of human beings. Just as the branch takes root and flourishes, humans have the capacity to delve deep into our inner selves, connect with our divine nature, and realize our full potential. Mamie reminds us that, humans, as branches of the divine, have the capacity to become godlike or divine ourselves. The act of being buried in the soil of divinity can be understood as a metaphor for deep spiritual introspection, self-realization and the recognition of our inherent connection to the divine or the higher power. By delving into our true nature and aligning ourselves with the divine, we have the potential to awaken our inner divinity and become one with God. Examples of this concept can be found in various spiritual traditions and practices. For instance, in Hinduism, the concept of Atman refers to the individual soul or self which is considered to be inherently divine and connected to the universal consciousness, or Brahman. Through practices such as meditation, self-inquiry and self-realization, individuals can realize their true nature as divine beings and experience oneness with the divine. Similarly, in mystical branches of Christianity, such as Christian mysticism or the teachings of Meister Eckhart, the idea of divinization or deification is present. The 13th-century German theologian and Christian mystic, Meister Eckhart thought that, 
through the process of spiritual purification and union with God. Individuals can become transformed and united with the divine nature. The more elaborate his labyrinths, the further from the sun his face. Mikhail Naimi The more complex and intricate our lives become, the further we move away from spiritual journey or inner truth. Just as a labyrinth is a maze of confusing paths, the complexities and distractions in our lives can lead us away from the light of spiritual awareness. For example, if a person becomes consumed by material possessions, status or external achievements, they may lose sight of their spiritual journey and the deeper meaning of life. Another similar situation is when we get caught up in researching, analyzing and dissecting every aspect of life. We may lose touch with our intuition and inner wisdom. This can create a sense of detaching from ourselves and others as we become more focused on mental constructs rather than genuine human connection. One of Mikhail's significant triumphs occurs when he begins to grasp the profound teachings of Murdat and the spiritual wisdom contained within the Book of Murdat. This awakening brings a newfound clarity and understanding, allowing him to see beyond the limitations of his previous belief and embrace a higher consciousness. The Book of Murdat is not just a novel. It is a transformative experience that invites readers to embark on their own spiritual journey. Amy's writing style is poetic and thought-provoking, inviting readers to reflect upon their own lives and the world around them. Through allegory and metaphor, he paints a vivid picture of the human condition and the potential for transcendence. One of the remarkable contributions of the Book of Murda is its ability to resonate with readers across different cultures and belief systems. Its universal themes, timeless wisdom and spiritual insights have transcended cultural borders, making it a cherished book for individuals seeking spiritual enrichment and understanding worldwide. Mamie's books challenge conventional beliefs and societal norms, urging people to question the established order and seek their own truths. His works emphasize the need to break free from societal conditioning and explore the vast and innate possibilities of self-discovery. Naimi was also involved in the revival of Arabic literature. In 1920, he played a key role in reforming the New York Pen League, a literary movement aimed at rejuvenating Arabic literature. Alongside other literary figures such as Hal Gibran, Naimi worked towards the rebirth of Arabic literary traditions. Mikhail Naimi had a close friendship with the renowned Lebanese-American writer and artist, Hal Gibran. They met in New York, and Naimi became one of Gibran's close friends and confidants. Naimi even wrote a biography of Gibran. After spending over two decades in the United States, Naimi returned to Lebanon in 1932. He settled in the city of Baskinta, where he continued to write. Mikhail Naimi passed away on February 28, 1988 in Beirut, Lebanon, at the age of 98. Throughout his life, Mikhail Naimi's literary contributions were widely celebrated, earning him honors and recognition both in Lebanon and internationally. His profound impact on literature and philosophy continues to inspire readers and thinkers to this day.